but you can't you can't make your opinion or judge something off the first reaction or right. the first bet you place or you know the look of a girl right because you don't know who she is you know um, it, you have to get to we know jumped this. <laughs> we jumped around. We jumped around a lot. You covered a lot of ground. <laughs> you covered an entire lifetime. I'm there. just yeah, yeah, <laughs> I'm trying to adapt to everybody, right? Hello and welcome to the first episode of the Life Insurance Academy podcast. I'm your host, Austin Lopes Silvero, and I'm here with Chris Ball, Zach McElwain, and Roger Short. The LIA podcast takes you out of the classroom and into the conversations of top producing agents in life insurance sales so you can level up your business. For Cliff Notes, check us out at LAPodcast.org or on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at Life Insurer Cat. Thanks for joining us today. We have a great show planned for you. We'll be exploring whether life insurance sales is really a six-figure opportunity. All right, so the three of you all, um, all come from different backgrounds, right? Chris, uh, you had a ministry background. Zach, you came to this opportunity straight out of college. Roger, you had a previous business in advertising. Um, but coming into this, you all had different kind of expectations or needs of the opportunity. Um, was $100,000, like making that six figures, was that your focus coming in or was it something else? Yeah, I think uh, for me, uh, making six figures was was a, something I had to learn really was. So, uh, it wasn't on, it wasn't on the horizon. I was a pretty hungry guy. Like I had to take care of my kids and my wife and, mm-hmm. um, I, I wanted to make sure that I was providing for them. And what I needed at that time was probably 60,000 ish. Mm-hmm. And, uh, my eyes had to be open to, to possibility. Uh, so it took me a little bit, uh, to, to learn the process, get engaged in uh in the the workflow and some mentoring and some some coaching to to see a bigger picture yeah for me you know coming out of college graduating uh with the a lot of the uh same feeling that we all have when we graduate okay what now um and then you realize that uh everything you've planned for isn't exactly the way it really is um but a little bit different than chris um i mean i was getting ready to get married uh, in just a few months so I had the pressures of that. I was currently in three different uh, jobs, um, very low-paying, hard-labor jobs um, in order to help fund college and, and make ends meet. Um, but I didn't need to make 60. I didn't need to make 100. It wasn't on my radar. But for me, it was a little bit different. I really wanted an opportunity to where I had control of my effort and my future. And I know this opportunity was very uh, interesting to me because of that, because I wanted to be my own boss and I wanted to be able to make the amount of money that uh, that equaled the effort that I put in. Um, and I always knew that eventually I would be over a six-figure earner. I didn't realize how quick it could come in this industry. And I really didn't have any expectation of when it was going to happen but I knew with my focus, my mindset, my work ethic that it would be there uh, quick for me. Um, I mean, when when I started, so I was coming transitioning out of this, you know this other business that we that, that I was a partner in, and uh, I was in the advertising business. Our our top producers there, you know, made well over a hundred thousand. Uh, you know, our average producers made about seventy five. And so when I was transitioning out of that industry into this one, I was looking for a business that allowed for great income. But to be honest, I mean, when I first started, I was looking out for me. And so when I rode around for two days with a guy named Frank in southern Indiana and checked this business out, and he was running what was called final expense leads at the time, um, I, I realized that just after two days of, uh, of seeing that process and sitting with families and, and helping them uh, find policies that could work for them and then uh, writing those up and, and, and actually writing... I think it was five or six policies in two days, about $4,000. I did the math, and I knew the math was there. I knew the opportunity was there. And in fact, I was looking for at least that. You know, I wasn't going to transition into something that was a low-income opportunity because I was already making you know, great money and well into six figures. And so uh, like 100000 was kind of the minimum floor for me as a threshold, analyzing it from a business perspective. You know, What can people make? And can you duplicate that? Can you teach it? 
And it didn't take me very long to realize the opportunities there. Now we just need to develop a system around it to do it. So, yeah, I think all three of us come from very unique perspectives on that. Uh, but um, understanding that the opportunity was there, certainly, I think when if you're listening to this podcast today, and that's one of your questions, like, what can I can I make that kind of money here? The answer is 100% yes. What your perspective is, though, might have you on a different trajectory to get there. Mm. Now, Roger, you said when um, that you had figured out kind of that formula, you had crunched numbers. So in a little bit, we're going to kind of dive into um, the components that makes this a six-figure opportunity. But will you just walk us through how you figured out that this was an opportunity for you to make the jump from your previous company to this um, very different industry? Than yeah, themselves? yeah. So when I started investigating at the time, uh, entry level contracts. If you were doing your own marketing, okay. Because so in this in this particular segment of the business, there's several ways that you can enter. You know, you can enter and go to work for uh, an agency and become a, a career agent with a with a uh, you know a, a company, and uh, they'll put you on a draw and that that sort of thing, and you can work that way. I was looking at it from the independent side. Uh, coming in as a as a as an agent broker essentially, where you're working for yourself, but you're working with a marketing organization to provide some of the services that you wouldn't necessarily want to do or you know know how to do initially, um, or even ever want to do it for some people. And um, so that's that's how I looked at it. And, and most of those contracts were in the range of seventy five to eighty five you know type of contract percentage of first year's annualized commission. And so that's what I was looking at. And then I was looking at you know what's what do people, how do, how, do, how do you get customers? How do you get clients? Well, I realized in those two or three days riding around that they were working leads. And these were pre qualified leads of leads that were generated through direct mail programs and, and that had gone out several weeks before and people had responded. So they were actually calling on people who had already said that they were interested in this and you were just visiting with those people. So it wasn't random door knocks. We weren't just randomly showing up at people's homes. It was showing up to people who had said that they wanted more information. Well, after a few days of that process, I thought, okay, with a certain number of leads and a certain number of presentations, you're going to have X number of closes. You're going, you know, because I'd been in the sales industry for so long, so I was doing the math. You know, it's a numbers game. Uh, if you got the right number of leads, you got the right number of presentations, you're going to have a certain amount of closes, even if you're limited, even if you're brand new. But if you just work hard enough and work all the leads. Uh, at those contract levels, and even with investing in your own uh, leads, uh, if you're buying your own leads at at that time, they were between twenty and twenty-four dollars a piece. Leads were. This was almost ten years ago now, but even at that price, uh, after doing all the math, I looked at it and just in those two days, we did forty-eight hundred, and I I did the math and extrapolated that out. You know, for uh, four or five days a week, if you did that for forty-eight weeks out of the year, give yourself four weeks of leeway, you're still you're you're going to be pushing six figures. So. Um, the sales part, I didn't have any questions with. That's what these guys were questioning because they hadn't come from a sales background. So they didn't know if they could do it in sales. I'd already done it in sales many, many times. So the sales process for me was not an uncomfortable one. I just had to apply those principles to this business. So Chris, you didn't come from a sales background like Roger just said. So when did you realize um, that this was a six-figure opportunity? Probably didn't crunch numbers. No, I'm not a big... <laughs> I wasn't a big numbers cruncher. Didn't even know how to crunch a number. That was a new new thing for me. But as far as uh you know, it's interesting. Like uh getting into sales or final expense sales specifically, I I didn't realize how transferable my skills were. I think that was a big wake up call for me. Um I didn't I wasn't sure if I was ready to be all in as far as this doing this for a career. Um, I did want to bet on myself. I did. I really liked that, that I, after having the rug pulled out from underneath me, um, being able to eliminate all excuses. And uh, it took me a while to trust, I think, to trust the system, the process, to trust uh, Roger and uh, the uh, the team, you know, um, to, to be able to say, man, I can, I can sink my, my teeth into this and, and be successful. So uh, it took me about a year and a half to, to really catch a vision for six figures. 
um, I was working part time for a year and a half. I had a good. Uh, I wasn't. I mean, it was it was great that I had the opportunity. I did to work three days and then work three days here. And um, you were I, working another part time job at correct, the time. Yeah. yeah. And at some point, you know, Roger was saying, "Chris, it's costing you more to stay there." And he was right. You know, I needed to jump in. And because uh, he had crunched the numbers, he had <laughs> crunched the numbers that I wasn't. That it wasn't crunching. I was like, how do I crunch this number? <laughs> but yeah, uh, so uh, learning that, and that's probably the case for a lot of people that there there are transferable skills. You know, if you are doing something and you're listening to this and you're trying to figure out, could I do this? And you manage people. You, yeah, you could you could do this if you're looking at this and uh, you do some customer service. Yeah, you can do this. I mean. If you're in some type of service industry, if what whatever, but it does take work. I mean, that's that's the the secret ingredient that nobody, will, well, everybody will tell you probably, but it takes work. You have I think to the go biggest thing you said there, that. Chris, was it wasn't necessarily oh, I have to have skills that transfer. It was you said eliminate excuses and bet on yourself. Yeah, and those two things are the only thing to me that really really matters to transfer. Now, the other things, your personality, you know, working with kids or people, or if you're already in it and you already work with, uh, you know, our clientele, it can be easier for mm-hmm. you. But those things of eliminating excuses and betting on yourself, it can make it to where this truly is a six-figure opportunity for anyone and everyone, no matter what your background, no matter what your age, no matter where you come from, if you have those factors, if you're willing to to bet on yourself and if you really want it. Yeah, you're not going to come right. into this industry and, you know, uh, kind of hope to make 100,000 but you know, on you know, you want to sleep in on Mondays or Wednesday I'm going to go ahead and and uh, you know, I, I'm going to take a day early cuz it's sunny out and I'm going to go golf in or I'm going to take my kids to the zoo and and then you're going to say, "Well, this isn't a six-figure opportunity." Right. Well, not if not if you're putting that six figure effort into it, and so that's that's the one thing that that I really liked coming into this was I didn't I didn't have those transferable skills. I didn't have much job experience. I mean, I worked at a uh, in in a warehouse where it was cold, no heat, no air all year long. Um, so in the summer you would be dying in, of heat, in the winter you'd be freezing, right? And then, um, you know, doing, running my own little lawn care business, which I enjoyed more than anything because of having that little, that little alone time and knowing that if I want to make money, I'm going to go out and do it. And coming into this, I didn't have a sales background. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't have where I was successful and I've already made six figures multiple times, you know, and like I said, for me, it was all about betting on myself. Mm-hmm. And it was all about eliminating those excuses, like yeah. you said exactly, mm-hmm. and and just diving in and being being honest and giving it everything I had. Yeah, yeah, and I do think, again, picking back off what you're saying, you know how important it was for you to say I'm going to give this a year. To- yeah, yeah, because at the end of the day, it's a process, right? Yeah. I mean, no matter what you're doing in life, it, it could be casino gambling. Right, and no matter what it is, if you, it's not what it's all cracked up to be. If you make one so bet know. and then say oh. Christmas is coming up and you're going to get your break and you'll have your day at the casino, just one day, just that's one day it. a year, yeah. yeah, that's it. But you can't you can't make your opinion or judge something off the first reaction or right. the first bet you place or you know the look of a girl, right? Because you don't know who she is, you know. Um, it, you have to get to we know jumped things. Around. We jumped around. Yeah, hey, you covered there. a lot of ground. You covered, you I'm, covered I'm, an I'm, entire lifetime. I'm, just, yeah, I'm <laughs> like, trying to adapt to everybody, right? Yeah. But if you think about it, anything in life, things change. Things yeah. aren't always what they appear. That is true. So you have to you, – and the biggest thing you can't do is you can't talk to, to that guy over there that says, oh, well, you don't want to do that. You you this or this group is the only good group or right. that's a bad lead or this is a good lead. Like those are their own opinions made by their selves with their excuses and their own right. work ethic. Mm-hmm. Like you have to find your way what fits you and create your own opinions because there's people that are, you know, that I see all the time in the same exact exact opportunity one of them makes three times as much as the other. Yeah, mm-hmm. running the same leads. Yeah, yeah. Well, you've always gotten the the 
you've always gotten the Glengarry leads. You've always gotten the special leads. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> yeah. The hidden gem leads. Uh, exactly. That's right. Zach, on the other side of what you were saying about it being a process and you having to stay engaged and give it a year and making sure that you're staying committed to growing and learning, there are people listening to this. If you're listening to this today and you're just checking this out and you're expecting for this to happen in the first 90 days, I'm, I'm going to let you know that you've got an unrealistic expectation because with the, the age of entrepreneurism and Instagram and YouTube videos and, and all the uh, Facebook ads that are running about 10xing this and 20xing that and Chris's favorite guy Grant Cardone I know 10x 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 <laughs> your so, face I mean <laughs> there, there's merits to, to to that philosophy however anything worth anything worth doing is worth doing well and if you do it well and you're in an opportunity that that uh, is is ripe for growth you will make great money and so when people come into this You've got to stay and you've got to dive into the process. And so the um, uh, if you have never made the six-figure opportunity and you're in this business and you're listening to this podcast today, we're going to cover the details of what that process looks like, of the, the formula, so, sort of the secret to what it takes to make 100000 I'm excited to get into that. I think we're going to cover that today, yep. right? And so I'm excited to cover that. But know this, regardless of what it is we're talking about, there is a process involved. And if you're willing to come in and commit to the process and give yourself time to adapt and stay at it and work hard and stay at it and continue to work hard and learn through your mistakes, you are going to be successful. And so uh, I'm excited to get in. Yeah, I would like to say in regards to this, uh, the entrepreneur, the age of the entrepreneur, I mean, we are at a time where it is the hippest, coolest thing to to you know jump on but there's a there's a a rom romance we'll call it romance because i think there's a lack of better word but you know people romanticize this idea and they become serial entrepreneurs because quote fingers yeah quote fingers they they love the idea of creating starting being a part of something and then all of a sudden uh there's a cancellation or a chargeback or a door shut in their face and now it's uh it's lost its shine yeah um and they aren't willing to go through the tough times to learn what yeah, they there's do. no resilience yeah it's yeah. that yeah. instant success that they want and when they don't get it mm-hmm. well it's um, what they see they yeah. see that right. on the internet and so people only post what they are perceiving to be successes mm-hmm. on the internet they're not they're not posting the grind i think gary v is probably one of the only guys who says it's going to be a grind right and just know that and keep working. And other than that, shut up and go to work, right? There's I mean, a lot he, of he's probably the only guy that's saying that. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's way too many people saying, hey, look at me. This is what I'm going to do this year. And, you know, we're just, and it's, it's, uh, it's not genuine. It's, yeah. it's disingenuous, but that's what people get caught up in. And uh, yeah, fake un- it till you make it. Unfortunately, it's, uh, it's something we have to deal with. And this, we're going to give you a formula. And that's the exciting part. And this is a six figure opportunity. And you can make a difference in someone's life doing it. So that's the cool part. So let's dive into that process. Um, what what can a new agent or someone um, that might have been doing this while, how do they get to that six-figure income um, mark in this industry? Um, I'll jump in. I'll field that one. Um, so one of the things that Zach said, you know, he talked about year one, year two, and then year three. And one of the things I have always commended Zach on is the fact that he was patient with the process and stayed in the hunt on uh, making himself the best advisor that he could. I mean, he was constantly learning. uh, He was constantly studying. uh, And he gave himself so many opportunities in front of clients. That was it's And his work ethic was his biggest asset. And Zach, I've always said that about you. Most people, when they get in this business, will not give themselves the time to actually succeed uh, because their expectations of what the income should be are not met within that first six to nine months. And one of the variables, Austin, uh, to this business that most people don't know and don't realize, if you're on the outside looking in, most of the, on the independent side anyway, as a broker, as an agent broker, when you come in, most of the insurance carriers will only advance you nine months of your commission. So they'll give you an advance of 75% of the full 100% of your commissions or nine of 12 months. And in, so in that first year, 
you're only receiving 75% of your advances. You have none of the 25% that's being held back. You don't get paid that until months 10, 11, and 12. Well, most agents start feeling some of the chargeback things, start feeling some of the grind. They start seeing some of the resistance and, and some of the learning curve they have to go through. But they're also not experiencing the additional income that's going to come once they get in year two. And, and even though we tell them, how many people, Chris, have we told you got to make sure you get to year two because you'll give yourself a 25% raise just by doing exactly the same thing. How many people jump out in month nine or month 11 and don't give themselves that opportunity? It's crazy. It's a lot. Yeah, It's a lot. And, and even though we tell them, they, they're not feeling it. So because the deposits are not hitting their bank account, um, and it's unfortunate, sometimes they jump out before they give themselves a chance to win. And then they get in months 10, 11, and 12 and realize they've got money continuing to come in from this insurance business that they started that they gave up on, but now they're in another job or now they've decided to do something different. So number the, the biggest thing, like give yourself 12 to 16 months to, to really get established and to dive in and stay focused. Now, there's a formula I'm sure we're going to dive into, but I'll throw it out to you guys for any other broad thoughts well, on I'd that. say the other, another big one is consistent workflow. Um having the mindset that you are your you are your employee and uh, you are the boss of your employee <laughs> that yeah. you have to go to work oh, on a regular go to work on a daily basis and i always speak in terms of um, launching a rocket when you're starting this business and you're fighting gravity uh, and the gravity in this business is mindset it's bad habits mm-hmm. it's um, unrealistic expectations and uh that will Home bring life you, baggage yeah all the other stuff all that, that comes stuff with sometimes poor relationships with your spouse i mean those are previous those, financial decisions you've yeah. made that put you in a tough position those are all the gravity that you're fighting to leave orbit you know and it takes every bit of rocket fuel to get there it takes every bit and uh so you have to make sure you you have what it takes in the tank to go out and be successful or fail as much as you can, but it takes consistent workflow. And the biggest mistake I see is people start to figure it out a little bit. They start to have a little bit of success and they reward themselves with time off. I know. Then they oh. are off for a couple of weeks. Then they have to relearn everything they were trying to learn in the first place. They get a little bit of success and they give themselves some time off. And it's a vicious cycle that will eat you up and spit you out in this business. <laughs> yeah. So consistent workflow is huge. I say the first part of the formula would be support. I think support is key, especially for me. I know it was for you, Chris. Mm-hmm. Um, um, in in not not just saying you need somebody there to you know watch you in the home, which is awesome if you have that available to you, but. For, for you as an agent, as a new person, to be able to soak up anything and everything you can as a sponge, to be able to have somebody to ask questions to, somebody that's done it, that's been through it, that have experienced the ups and downs. Because um, I would say one of the key things in this business is mindset. And it's that uncertainty or that insecurity of, am I doing it right? Am, am I doing it good enough? Am I getting better um, maybe I just lost my talent out of nowhere because I took a three-week vacation. But having somebody in your corner or a group that you're associated with that can seriously just support you to answer questions, just to talk to you, to say, hey, this man continuously does it. I'm going to lean on him. I know it can be done. You can you can find confidence through other people. Yeah, I, I, I 100% endorse that. I mean, if you when I when I started in the business, I was looking for an organization or a group to be a part of so I could learn, so I could um, in anything. I mean, I, I'm I I don't question my own work ethic. I don't question my ability to be able to convert and to communicate with people and to learn. So knowing that I had skills to transfer, the the things that I didn't know was what I didn't know. So I had to get around people who did know and learn from them. And one of the best things you can do is learn from the best people in the business. And so you surround yourself with people who know what they're doing, but you can provide you feedback when you're in the hunt yourself. And so um, I can't stress enough how important it was for me to be a part of an organization that that provided that. Uh, and you know, we we try to do that here uh, and and make those things available to us. So you have real time support when you're in the home, you know, so that you have 
underwriting support. You have uh, feedback. You can do jam sessions with people. You can you can dive into a, a training segment like this one, for instance. Um, even though we're having a conversation about it, so that you can continually improve yourself and and to be a part of an organization and develop some relationships with people who have have had success. And then you can lean on them to uh, to better yourself. So I would 110% endorse that. I would say the second part of this formula would be um, having a really good lead flow. Um, and, uh, you know, for me personally, that was a good 20 to 25 opportunities of what we'd call fresh leads, primary leads, um, platinum leads, A leads. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> there's so many names out there, but... Um, preferably a client that has, hasn't been called on before or it hasn't been, the lead hasn't been given or sold to multiple people. Um, I like to have that number of leads and have that many opportunities because I know there's other opportunities I'm going to work out there as such as referrals and, um, you know, friends and family um, and warm market leads or people I know or people the client knows. So there's that even though there are 20 or 25 leads that you're actually working on a week-to-week basis, um, that really is about 50 to 60 opportunities. So, But having that fresh um, every week is important. And by doing that, to really make this work, you need to make sure you're working all of them. You can't work two days a week mm-hmm. with this many leads and say, well, this isn't the opportunity. Because the problem isn't uh, the opportunity or the lead flow or even your contract level. It has nothing to do with it. It's, it's internal. It's your own work ethic as far as that goes. But, Roger, um, how, many, how many leads do you typically work there you know, when you're constantly on a week-to-week basis? Well, when I was in the field full-time and I was trying to get this established for me and my family, um, I fluctuated between 18 and 24 leads. And these at the time were direct mail leads. I think we should do, we're probably going to do a podcast on leads coming up. In the up. next episode. Is it the next episode? Okay. So I know we're going to do that. But obviously in this business, and we're talking specifically now in the final expense arena. Zach, I know that's your perspective. We obviously do mortgage protection sales. We have lead generation for that as well. But in when I first got started, I started in the final expense niche. And I tapped into a, a mail house essentially and was working somewhere between 18 and 24 leads. And I tried every way to contact those. But... My goal was to work every one of those leads uh, on a weekly basis and then to keep every lead that I didn't get to in a reserve so I can continue to work them. So, yeah, having a good lead flow, uh, if you don't have that, you're just solely relying on family and friends. And then it's how much credibility do you have with family and friends and how good are you on the phone to establish an appointment to have someone else come in really and do that. And there's lots of opportunities in the insurance business that offer that. If that's what you're looking for, I just didn't want to be the guy who was transitioning from Yellow Pages trying to convince my family and friends to buy a life insurance policy the next week, right? I didn't, you know, and Zach, you probably would have had a tough time convincing your family and friends to buy life insurance from you right out of school. You know, you play yeah, basketball yeah, and mow lawns, and now today I'm here selling you life insurance. Yeah, so. for sure. And and it's cool to see that there is a range and it does fluctuate. And that and the reason it is that because it, it's all determined by your skill level and your experience. Um, I started out running 25 a week and also I would also run older leads or um, previously assigned leads or B leads or C leads or whatever you want to call them um, in addition just to have more opportunities um, when you know the last time I was fully in the field on a week to week basis I think I was getting a consistent 17 a week that was the magic number for me um, but I could have I could never be where I'm at today skill set wise if I started out on 17 a week and I think that's one of the biggest misconceptions with people coming to this industry is they're like oh my gosh I need to buy you know just 10 I'm just trying to get started I'm trying to figure this yeah, out they're trying to do it on the fewest leads possible and yeah. giving themselves the they're, most opportunity they're scared they're scared to spend that extra dollar if they're paying for the lead um, when when you really look at it uh, it's about more opportunities whatever you can do to have more opportunities I know Chris you, when you started part-time, how did that change from part time to full time to inexperienced to experienced? It was um, I started out with fifteen leads and part time, part right? time, yeah. And even then, but my part time was pretty close. I mean, I was working three days, you know. Because your part time was full time for what most people come into the bit that we've seen over the yeah. years. I've yeah. seen most people come in. This is the only thing they do. The effort you were putting in <laughs> part time is yes. what most people do full time. Yeah. Now. Uh, 
it might sound like I'm a little jaded against that, but I've just seen so many people come in. I agree. Yeah. And they treat it like, hey, I'm working. I'm 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 where I busted it. I retired all my leads by Wednesday. Yeah. I'm like, so what did you do Thursday and Friday? Well, I didn't have any more leads. Well, does that mean like there's n- nobody lives on the planet? <laughs> right. Like, did, did everybody shut their doors yeah. and go to bed? I mean, like, what are you going to do the rest of the week? Yeah. Yeah. So no, you were working almost full time, but but yeah. So then when, but I will say like the the shift of focus was different when I moved to full time because I burnt the the ships, you know, mm-hmm. literally. Just kidding. There weren't ships. Burnt. All of them. All of them. I burnt all the ships in America, but um. But it required me to move my focus to, you know, being very good at this. I had to. I had no choice. So my skill set um, adapted, uh, got better, and then I increased my lead order. I, For me, even if I were to go out today, I'd want 20 to 25 leads. I just mm-hmm. like that number. Um, yeah. like the more opportunities, the less pressure you have. Yeah, I feel good about it. Yeah, and some people get, like Zach, you, you said, some people get focused on trying to save money and like they keep trying to right. figure out other ways to reinvent mm-hmm. a new lead. And like, how can I develop a lead for $8 or $10? Or, um, and they spend more time trying to figure out how to save $6 on a lead than going to see three more people where they can make an extra $700 or $800. Yeah. Um, so like, I would rather see more people. That's how that's, I feel. That's 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 my part. So, if I'm in the life insurance sales business, then I need to focus on the life insurance sales business, not on marketing, because that's a different industry. And so, you know, obviously here we teach sales and we do marketing, but our agents do sales, and so uh, we try to make it simple and easy for them to have success. And, my, yeah. and when when it comes to having those opportunities, it directly translates into what the most important thing to me was. You know, my formula for success. Um, which starting out was working five days a week. Um, and so whenever you think about that, I had a goal of at least, my goal was at least a 1000 a day in annualized premium. So that's whatever the monthly premium is for the client times 12. That's what the annualized premium is. So if it was a 1000 a day and I was committed to working five days, my goal for the week was at least 5000 Okay. So as a new agent, you're riding in your car, you're like, wow, that's a lot. Oh my gosh, that's I've hit that once ever and it was my best week. How can I do that each and every single week? Well, it's going to take practice and it's going to take commitment. For one, you need those extra opportunities, so stop trying to save that dollar, right? Um, but when you do that, you have to break it down to make it simple for you so you can process it mentally. For me, it was easy. All I needed to do was to sell a thousand a day. A thousand a day can be achieved on one eighty dollar a month application or two forty dollar a month applications. So when you think about that, that can come off of one lead. That's either a single client that gets an eighty dollar plan, or it could be a couple which they both sign up for forty dollar plan each. Sounds very simple. So when you're out there in your car. Um, you're having a great day or you're having a bad day. Maybe you haven't found anybody home. Maybe, honestly, you haven't worked much um, and you're just getting out into the field at five in the afternoon and you're trying to just get one sit in. (laughs) Um, Whatever your situation is, your goal is always attainable because it can be accomplished on one simple lead. And that was the biggest thing for me because if you have a daily goal that you need to, it has to be accomplished on three or four leads, if it's getting late in the day, you feel like you've already failed and then you want to quit and you want to give up and start again next week. But to know that that that's one sell or to reach your daily goal can literally be your last knock at nine o'clock at night. Um, it keeps you going. It keeps you in the fight. Mm-hmm. Now, one thing that was different for me because Roger mentioned a little bit about um, advances or kind of how commissions work. And we may get into that in another podcast. I'm not sure, but I never counted any guaranteed issue towards my daily goal. A guaranteed issue is a plan that is essentially going to be on a uh, some sort of building benefit or waiting period for the client. But more importantly, a guaranteed issue to me is going to be non-advanced commissions. Mm-hmm. As earned only. As earned only. So if I sold a company that paid as earned only, I would not count that towards my daily goal. I'm not going to celebrate that. I'm not going to count that mentally as a deposit into my bank account because it's really not going to be there. Why am I going to celebrate that? So my goal was at 1000 a day 
of fully commissionable advanced premium. So if I worked five days, it's five grand. If I worked four days, it's four grand. If I'm going to go out to work, I'm going to make sure I hit my daily goal. And that, but, but the key thing about it, because there's people that do that and have that same goal, the difference is that's my minimum and I'm not stopping until I'm getting it. I'm not reaching it and saying that was a great week and next week I wrote 2,000 and be like, that's okay, I wrote 5,000 last week. And then the week after that, I wrote 3,000. That's a good week. And two weeks ago, I wrote 5,000. I'm not hanging my hat on that. That is my daily goal every single day. And if you really want to make this a $100,000 opportunity, you have to be mentally tough and hold yourself accountable on a daily basis, Mm -hmm. on a per lead basis, not looking at it for the year. Because if you're looking at it for the year, you're going to lose sight of everything you set set for yourself. And all of a sudden, you're going to land at 58,000 for the year. Yeah. And you're going to look confused. But when you have that good week, you might write 10, 12, 13, 15,000 in premium. But on your bad week, you're writing four or five. Because you know, like Roger said, you're, you're probably going to take some vacation time around the holidays. We've got Christmas coming up. I know I'm planning on taking a, a little bit of time off spending with my family. But you have to account for sick days, sick weeks, vacation weeks. Emergencies, family situations, like all the stuff that people don't account for. You have to account for that too. Yeah, and, and so that's that was my number to earn my, uh, my comp increases um, and to to really develop and learn. And also by doing that, I know I'm going to sit with a certain number of families and I'm going to learn. I'm going to gain that experience more than anything. But I know, Roger, your formula is very similar, right? It's similar. I mean, my goal was to, my goal was to contact, um, contact as many people as it took to give me 12 to, uh, 12 to 14 presentations a week. 12 to 16, like right in that number. Like I wanted no less than 12. 16 was probably on the top end of what I could do in a week and be effective. I mean, if you think if you're working four days, it's four a day. If you're working five, it's about three, three and a half a day. And so that, that's, that's a pretty full week, especially if you're doing some admin and you, you, know, you got some drive time and prep to do. Um, so for me, that was, that was like a full week. And so 12 to 16 opportunities, in order for me to get that, I needed to make a lot of phone calls and or a lot of door knocks. If I'm working mortgage leads, I'm making a lot of phone calls. I'm dialing early. I'm dialing late. I'm trying to catch people when they're home to try to set up my schedule, set up my appointments. If I'm doing final expense and I'm doing phone calls, I need I can call anytime during the day because a lot of these seniors are at home during the day. If I'm simply doing door knocks, I have to get out early and I have to start at around 10. I need to be there for the first one at 10 o'clock so that I can actually give myself an opportunity to, to, to see uh, those 12 to, to 14, 12 to 16 people. And in doing that, um, that allowed me to have the opportunity to, even if I closed only 50%, 50%, I'm still going to sell six to eight policies. Well, our average premium, I figured out, and you'll, you'll figure this out as you go through, you only know what your average premium is uh, for our company here. You know, over the number, of, I mean, thousands and thousands of policies, thirty or forty thousand clients now over the past eight, ten years. Um, our average premium is right around six hundred and eighty bucks, seven hundred and twenty bucks uh, for the uh, the premium for the year. So if you calculate that and you do six of those, you know, six sevens, that's forty two hundred. If you do eight of those. Uh, right, so you, you that's fifty six hundred. So you you got your number. So it ends up being my goal was to do two applications a day. So if I've got three to four presentations, I want to write two policies. In some homes, I'm going to write a husband and a wife. In others, I'm sitting with single people. So, but I'm going to give myself the uh, opportunity to write two policies a day at that number, about twelve hundred a day at the minimum. Four days a week is forty eight hundred. Five days a week is going to put me well over my number for six figures. And so that that that's the formula for me. It was like. Psst, Three to four presentations, two applications, four to five days a week. That's it. Head down. Look up on Friday. Yep. That's the same. It was 12 to 15 presentations a week, um, two, two to three apps a day. Um, just, again, putting my head down and, and working hard. Mm-hmm. What are some reasons people might not hit that or might not make the $100,000 if – they're maybe they're doing all this, or maybe like why wouldn't they hit a hundred thousand dollars in this industry? I will say uh, the number one issue, and it wasn't it wasn't mentioned on the the formula, 
there is uh, is accountability. We said support. I feel like support and accountability. Ac- accountability is a form of support, I guess. But um, some transparency and accountability of activity. I think um, number one people. Number one reason. Number one reason people fail is because of work ethic. Yeah, I agree, hundred percent. They intend to do this, right? What they do, their intention and their action don't line up. Consistency yeah. and patience. Yeah. And like, like anybody, anybody can come into this industry, anybody, and they can write $5,000 in a week. I'm confident. I've, I've seen it happen to the people you might not think it could happen to, right? Anybody can, but not everybody can do it every week. And that's because they don't want to. It's, it's that consistency or developing um, or putting in the time it takes to have the ability to write that every single week. Is hanging your hat on a monster week and then you take a vacation after the big week every time. So then it averages out to not be in very much at all. It kills your momentum. Yeah. And momentum momentum matters. It does. And uh, that, that accountability factor, having somebody that you're handing the reins to. I mean, if you want to be accountable, be accountable to your spouse, you know. Mm-hmm. <laughs> There's one. <laughs> have it. Have your spouse put a foot in your ear to go to work. You Those know? bills if are you consistent. have a spouse. Yeah, if you have a spouse. If not, go get one. Just kidding. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> Brought to you by Tinder. Just kidding. Oh, that guy, oh, no. oh, that. Just kidding. <laughs> um, but seriously, if you want to sponsor us. Yeah, we're good with that. Okay. Yeah. But uh, the accountability factor is a big, big deal because I can say to myself, man, excuses are powerful. I can say to myself, well, uh, I got a pretty good day today. I'm going to go home. We make excuses for everything. We make excuses for good days. We make excuses for bad days. Oh, man, I've had a really bad day. I'm going to go and go home. It's the same thing. It's, you know, Chris, it's like golf. Yeah. In this business, it's like golf. You always take full credit for everything that went right, and you don't want to take any credit for anything that went wrong. Right. It, like, it, 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 like when you're counting your golf score, man, if I just made that putt, I would have broke 80. <laughs> Right. What about the fluky one that banged off the rock and ended up on the green when it should have went in the water? You know, so yeah. like you didn't count. You took credit for that, but you don't want to take credit for like yeah. a terrible putt that you missed. Um, so it, it's this, it's the same. Frank Betger in his book How I Raised Myself from Failure to Success in Selling uh, said this, and I, I can't tell you how many times I've read this book. Show me any man of ordinary ability who will go out and earnestly tell his story to four or five people every day. And I'll show you a man who just can't help making good. It's about the activity and just doing it. Um, uh, Every Burke day. Hedges, yeah, Burke Hedges, a guy who wrote a book called You, Inc., talks about you being the boss of you. And so the greatest thing about being in this business, for some people, for the first time ever, is that they're the boss. I've, I've created my own opportunity. I have no ceiling anymore. No one's telling me what to do. Well, the good thing about that is that you're the boss. You get to set the agenda. You get to set the goals for 2020 coming up next year. And man, the new decade is going to be fantastic. The bad thing about that is that you're the boss of you. (laughs) And if you're not a great boss of you and your number one employee is not living up to its full potential, you will have a miserable experience. And the boss might need to have a talking to their number one employee. It's it's all about mindset. It's, It's how you process and how you deal with daily things that enable you or will disqualify you from making six figures or not making six figures. And you can continue to make excuses for those things and say, well, it's just a bad, you know, the weather was bad today and then I had to take my car in because my spouse has a regular job, but because I don't have a regular job, I can take time off. And so, you know, like it, it, it's, it's amazing the excuses you make for yourself because you should be mm-hmm. flexible. Uh, but people who have jobs have to be accountable. If you held yourself <laughs> accountable like it was your job and you had to report to a CEO who was going to fire you, you'd make six figures. I don't know how you yes. can, Chris. Am I wrong? No, you are 100% I'm correct. I'm getting fired up here. You are. <laughs> <laughs> so now if someone comes up to you and asks you about this opportunity, like what are you telling them? I'm telling them to get connected with a good organization, um, be prepared to roll up your sleeves, Give it, give it uh, two years, 16 to 18 months. Get into that second year. Go out and go to work. Tell your story three to four times a day, five days a week, and you'll be successful. Get out of your head on all the other stuff. Get connected. Get accountable. Do the work. And repeat. Shampoo bottle. Rinse. Repeat. Do it again. I feel like we'd probably end there, but any other final comments? <laughs> One question that I ask 
uh, when I, I'm interviewing people is uh, how much do you think you're worth as far as your salary? And uh, some people will say probably what I would have thought at the time when I first started. And I know that there's some uh, mindset issues, you know, that we're going to work through so that they can see a bigger vision for their lives. And then uh, there are some people who will say, you know, they'll shoot the moon, which is great. But my my spider sense kind of goes off on both of these spectrums, you know, uh, because generally the and you may be listening and you are this person, this serial entrepreneur puts way too much value on their time. And the person who is new, who says I can I only need to make 30,000 doesn't value their time enough, you know. Um, so, uh, that coming in with a realistic mindset of there's going to be ups and downs and it's going to take consistency and it's going to take a little bit of time for me to learn the process and be successful. That is, man, that is a, that is a key. It's like the temperature of the recipe, you know, uh, turning the oven on and preheating it. It's that's, that's an important part of it. Yeah. I would say the biggest thing is, is kind of piggybacking off what Chris said, is having a strong why because if you don't have a strong why then you're not going to be you know given a good effort throughout the entire year but i'd say have a strong why why are you even doing this why are you here who are you providing for why is it important why does it matter but having a good consistency in your mindset because it won't always be easy it will be tough you'll have days where you feel like the number one agent in the nation because you wrote eight thousand in one day and it was unbelievable and then you'll have a week where it's like nobody wants to talk to you and you're wondering if you smell funny, right? I mean, there are ups Literally, and downs. they're two weeks apart. It could yes. be. It could We've be. We've seen it happen. And, uh, you know, having a consistency in your effort, good or bad results, your effort should not change. Um, you should be able to be committed to those certain number of leads, seeing so many, the same number of families every single week and working them. And because you had a good week last week, don't let that make you be lazy this week. Because you had a bad le- week last week, don't let that carry over to this week and say, well, I'll just get started next week. And then the last one is just having patience. Patience in your vision of what you want to accomplish and your goals and make sure they're always there and it's visible, which goes back to your why. Um, but understanding that it's okay if you don't make 100000 tomorrow, it's a process and you will get there and you want to develop to where after you make a hundred thousand, it's crazy easy to duplicate. I have one, one final wrap up thought that we didn't really touch on, but it was big for me. And I think it's big for most people who are successful in any industry and that self belief in what you're doing makes a difference. And uh, in this business, if it's just sales and it's not the benefit of providing uh, life insurance for a family at their worst time, okay? A life insurance benefit that's going to pay to a family at their worst time. If you have no concept of what that can do for a family, I encourage you to get around some agents or talk to some people who've, who've had that happen, and they will share with you a story of the benefit uh, that matters beyond anything that you can put uh, um, a learning curve to because it does something in, inside and it creates a belief system that is, in my opinion, uh, the biggest factor for your success. Because when you believe in something so strongly, you become passionate about that. And when you become passionate about it, it's not hard to find the motivation to go to work. It's not hard to figure out why you should be doing this and why the family you're sitting with needs this so badly. Because you've seen it, you've experienced it. You've, 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 you've seen the benefits of how it impacts a loved one, a family, a father, a mother, a wife, a spouse, a child. And uh, when people get that in, inside here, I'm pointing right inside my chest, once you realize that and the, the, the change that it can make in their life, um, it's like the Zig Ziglar story. You know, when they were selling, when Zig Ziglar couldn't figure out how to sell these pots and pans. And, they were, and he was failing miserably. And, and he said, well, when you use them, Zig, I mean, what's the best things you like about them? He said, what do you mean? He said, when you use the pots and pans at home, what do you like most about them? He said, well, I don't own a set. He said, that's why you're not selling any Zig. Mm. You don't believe in your own product. Mm. Figure out how to believe in that, know the value, and know what it can do, and it will change your perspective on everything. Work ethic, attitude, everything changes. So I just want to leave with that. (music) 
And that's a wrap for today's episode. For show notes, links to the books Roger reference, and a written out version of the formula for six-figure producers, visit lapodcast.org slash EP1. That's liapodcast.org slash EP number one. If you enjoyed this podcast, make sure to subscribe wherever you're listening and follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at Life Insure Acad. The Life Insurance Academy podcast is hosted, edited, and mixed by me, Austin Lopesilvero. This episode was produced by Roger Short and myself. Our theme song is by Flashing Lights. We'll see you on next week's show where we'll dive into final expense leads and what nobody is telling you. Until next time, drive safely and go be a difference maker.